Hey there everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about the brand new Sony RX100 Mark VI. And I'd love it if y'all could take this as a brief and incomplete vlog style test of the Sony A7 III with the Tamron 28-75 f2.8. So the uh, Mark VI is a really compelling camera for a lot of reasons. But I think that it kind of misses out on a lot of things too, and that is because its starting aperture is an f8 equivalent, 35 mil full frame. You know, equivalency is a discussion, is a is a subject of conversation that is uh, desired to be ignored by many. And there are some that make very high quality content, like Matthias Berling, that don't believe that aperture equivalence is a real thing. Now, I don't think that he does his tests entirely fairly, but that is neither here nor there. What is both here and there is that the Mark V has its 24mm at f1.8. The Mark VI has its 24mm at f2.8, so you're losing like a stop and a half, stop and a third of light at 24mm. Then at 200, you're at f4.5, so you've lost even more light because the 70 at on the RX100 uh, Mark V is at f2.8, so you've lost another stop and a half, stop and a third, something along those lines. So this is a this is a camera that is already giving us a fair number of compromises in comparison to its predecessor. Now, the reason why this camera is compelling right, is that focal range. So it makes sense that we're starting with that. One of the things that it's really lacking though that this that we need to talk about is the built-in ND filters, because that's a big deal for a lot of people and it really makes a difference. On the flip side, it's included the HLG format for both, for all of its video recording and for its stills performance. So you can hypothetically at any rate, get much better dynamic range out of this sensor and out of this camera than you would otherwise be able to, quite simply because of this HDR, HLG picture profile developed between NHK, Japanese television firm, and uh, the, the British BBC. So there's a very clear audience, in my opinion, for the RX100 Mark VI. You may be it, you may not be it. It is, in many ways, the perfect hybrid of the RX-10 and the RX-100 series, the latest iterations thereof. It has all the same hardware internally as both of those cameras, but it has a focal range that is a nice middle ground between the two with a price point for $500 less than the RX-10. Now, $300 more to, uh, well, it kind of depends on the sales of the, of the season, right? At two or $300 more than the Mark V, in my opinion, that's a bit too much for what you're getting. On the flip side, you are also getting great features like a touch to focus, touch to shutter, touch shutter on the back of the screen, and that's going to be really appealing to a lot of people. I think that's going to capture a lot of people that would otherwise have gotten an RX-10 Mark V just because that touch shutter, touch to focus is something that's really popular nowadays even if it's not perhaps the most necessary or necessarily useful component in any device with 65% uh, on sensor phase detect autofocus point coverage which is really good. So yeah, that's those are my thoughts on it. I don't have hands-on time and like I've said I'm recording this on my A7 III, so I'd love it if y'all could give me some commentary on what you think this video quality has been like. That would help out a lot. Um, I'd love it if you could leave some comments down below as well as to what you'd be interested in in my review of the A7 III that I have uh, just now started to film recently. I will try very hard to include those. You know, the most popular suggestions will probably actually end up happening. Thank you very much for liking subscribing, hitting that notification bell if you are going to be interested in that upcoming A7 III review and or if you enjoyed this content. I really appreciate your time and your attention and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.